Hey, hey, this is Jessica Caver Lindholm, founder of Two Living Free, and I am totally obsessed with helping you live the freedom-filled, soul-led life that lights you up every single day and get paid for it. Are you in? Then follow me. This is Live Free TV. I want to talk about normalizing money because we make money this really special thing and we make it really complicated. And you'll hear me say, if you've been in my community at all, that anytime that we make something special, we make it separate. So think about it. Think about something that you think is really special. So maybe there's some celebrity that you think is special or, um, you know, a certain type of body or whatever it is. When we make something special, we make it separate from ourselves. We're basically saying, yeah, that's great, but that's not me. And I noticed that we, it's really common in women, especially that we make getting paid um, in our businesses special. And it's something that it's like, well, that's for someone else. That's for those online entrepreneurs who have it all figured out. They must have all the system structure strategy in place. They must have a big team. They must have a big ad spend. Like they must have all the things figured out. Right. And so we make it special, this getting paid online thing. And what my skill is more than anything with now, I mean, it's been my skill from the beginning, but especially now with over almost a decade of experience in this business and this work and having consistent five figure months for almost a decade. Now, my really gift is that I'm able to take all of the things that feel complicated and overwhelming and just, I know what you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You're like, what do I even do? There's so much to do. Where do I even begin to start? And to simplify it because the easiest way to get paid is to not complicate it and to not make it special. When you normalize money, money gets to just come in. Okay. And I have a really great example of this, but first and foremost, I would love a little bit of common action. Because so. the thing is, is that as humans, our minds and our creativity is what our superpower is. And whether we realize it or not, you are telling a story all the time. So my background is actually in anthropology, cultural anthropology, archaeology, all of this sort of thing. And yes, now I'm in no, I'm in coaching, Co coaching, course creation, visionary leader, all of that good stuff. And what I found, I still love anthropology and I'm still really connected to that, um, to that field. And in my studies of anthropology, one of the things that really sets apart the human culture is that we are storytellers. We are always telling stories like from our earliest age. It's oftentimes how we've passed down traditions, how we've passed down history, how we've passed down learnings, even things that have kept certain civilizations alive, communities, etc. And the thing is, is that in our common, um, or in our modern society, we don't realize that we are telling stories. And so we don't realize that there is a constant narrative that's going on in our minds. We just don't realize it. And we think that things are happening to us. We think that this is the life that's just been given to us, or this is how it is. And it's just, you know, that's how it is. That's not the case. You still have control of the story because you are a storyteller and you still have control of the narrative. So what I would invite you to do is start to look at your narrative or your story that you're telling yourself around business, around money. Um, what are all the things that you tell yourself that maybe you don't even realize that are going on behind the scenes? And one of the key ones I'm pretty sure you're going to find if you're not making the money that you really desire is you've put some level of specialness on money, that it's something that's separate from you and it's something that's difficult to get. Now, a really great example of this or analogy for this is oxygen, okay? Now, we all need to breathe, right? <laughs> Breathing is important. It's literally vital for our survival, even more so probably than money. But money is required for the society that we live in at this point. And so I like to equate money and oxygen because Oxygen is vital, and yet we're not sitting around trying to manifest it all day, right? We're not like, I gotta make the oxygen come in. I need to think the right thoughts. If I'm not in aligned thoughts, then there's no way I can take the next breath, right? Is any of this resonating? Does this make sense? We don't put that level of pressure on breathing, and so it happens naturally. We don't put that level of specialness on breathing. So it happens naturally. It's part of our natural existence. Breathing just is, right? Breathing just is. We're not fearful if there's going to be enough for the next breath. My biggest intention is to 
guide you to remember the state around money that's similar to your state around breathing, where money just is. It's a natural breathing in and breathing out. You don't have to hold on to it all of it. There's always more coming in. There's always more available. And it's literally impossible for you to run out of money because money is a renewable resource. As long as you have the ability to create more, which every single one of you do, as long as you're breathing, as long as you're alive, then you can't run out of money. It's literally impossible. I don't care what your bank account looks like right now. You fully have the ability to create more. And I want to be able to share my perspective around money because it has set me free from being the girl back in 2000, you know, 13, who was waiting tables and cleaning houses and running around Denver, like trying to sell personal trading sessions and made $7,000 total that year to being the girl who was making 10,000 cash by May of 2014, something massive shifted. And it wasn't so much in my actions as it was in my mindset and my relationship to money. And since that time, my relationship and my experience of money has just kept getting easier. And I'm sharing this because we've created such a drama around money when really it doesn't need to be complicated. And if you're in a space right now where you're like, yeah, but Jess, it does feel complicated. I totally get it. And I've been there. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I'm inviting you to borrow my faith around it, borrow my perspective around it. Like in the same way that imagine if someone came to you and they were terrified of breathing and they were so afraid afraid they were going to use up all the oxygen. Think about what you would say to them about breathing. Think about what you'd say to them. This is such a good journal practice and actually this has never come through before. So I would love for you to think about this for a minute, maybe even write it down. So if someone came to you right now, I'm afraid that there's not going to be enough air for the next breath. And so I think I'm just going to hold my breath for a bit. What would you tell them about breathing? What would you say to them about air around oxygen? You'd probably say something down the lines of, oh, no, no, it's okay, love. Of course you can take a deep breath. There's plenty of air for everyone. There's plenty of oxygen for all of us. You can take as many breaths as you want. If you feel like holding your breath, great, but you don't have to. You can breathe in, you can breathe out, you can go for a jog and use extra air. You can lounge and use a little less air. Whichever you desire, not one is good or bad. Breathing is totally natural and there's more than enough air for all of us, right? probably say something on the lines of that. Now, what I would invite you to do is write out what you would say to someone if they said that they were afraid of breathing. And then what I would love for you to do is all the areas that you're putting air, oxygen, breathing, cross them out and write in money. Okay? No, love. Of course, there's always enough money for everyone. Yeah, you can spend more money right now if you want to and you feel like it. And then if tomorrow you don't want to spend as much, that's fine as well. And there's always more where that comes from. So you can hold on to some of the money for a while and then you can spend more of it. That's all great. Money just is. It's a constant and it's always been there. Do you feel the difference of this? This is the energy of prosperity. 